Manganese sulfate is a fairly important industrial chemical in its own right, but it is also produced in large quantities as a byproduct of several manufacturing processes that employ manganese dioxide as an oxidizer. A reasonably straightforward procedure can be used to produce a sample using potassium permanganate, sodium bisulfate, and hydrogen peroxide. But since manganese sulfate is often used in treating manganese deficient soil, it's readily available in well-stocked garden supply stores. As with most manganese II salts, the sulfate has a light pink color. This is the monohydrate. The anhydrous salt is a little closer to white, and the tetrahydrate is a bit darker pink. It's fairly soluble in water, but depending on which reference you look at, its solubility in alcohol is either really, really good or non-existent. So first, let's find out which it is. I prepared a somewhat concentrated solution in water, which does have a detectable pink color. I dispensed it more or less evenly between four test tubes, and to each of these I'll add a different solvent and see what happens. If the manganese sulfate is soluble in the solvent, all of which are miscible with water, the solution should be complete, at least theoretically. If the salt turns out to not be soluble in the organic solvent, I suspect one of two things will happen. Most likely, in my mind, the salt would precipitate out as the alcohol and water mix. But let's see how it goes. The first solvent is ethanol. I didn't want to add too much because I don't really want to overwhelm the system. After mixing it up some, I did notice what I thought to be fine solids. Then I went for broke and added a whole bunch of ethanol. I suspected the rest of the salt would crash out, and I'd eventually be left with diluted alcohol and a pile of manganese sulfate. Next up, I try some methanol. Once again, I start with a small volume. I declared this to be more obviously precipitating at the time of the experiment, but if you notice carefully, the solids are precipitating up. The last alcohol I'm going to try is isopropanol. This produced a gelatinous looking goop. I use isopropyl alcohol in a demonstration to precipitate potassium sulfate from solution and make a snowstorm in a tube. I again opted for going overboard and added more IPA to the tube. For fun, I decided to finish off with some acetone. Manganese sulfate is not soluble in acetone, so I wanted to see the comparison. Luckily, I have the benefit of editing. During each trial, I said, oh, that one's got a precipitate. And in each case, the precipitate actually fell up. That's because it wasn't a precipitate. I let my bias get the best of me. Left to sit, each one clearly separated into two phases. The water phase with the manganese sulfate and the organic phase with no dissolved solids. At least, not enough to care about. This is kind of cool because that's the second option when you have a mixed solvent. I said earlier that the solvents can mix and the salt falls out of solution. And that's the case with my potassium sulfate blizzard demonstration. However, if you add potassium carbonate to a solution of ethanol and water, it will dissolve in the water, but not the alcohol. What was once a homogeneous solution of water and alcohol becomes a biphasic system with an aqueous potassium carbonate solution on the bottom and ethanol on the top. This principle is often used in organic chemistry to dry products, whether by washing an organic liquid with brine solution or by adding dry magnesium or sodium sulfate to attract the water dissolved in the organic liquid. This was an interesting result. And we can say that manganese sulfate does not dissolve in alcohol, at least not to any appreciable level. Now that's been sorted, it's story time. When I first started getting serious about doing chemistry demonstrations, I was always looking for new experiments to add to my show. My dad told me a story about a chemical test he used to perform at work. It was Winkler's test for dissolved oxygen, also called biological oxygen demand, or BOD for short. He would use this test as a demonstration to new employees why you should never drink anything when you're in the lab, and why you should never put anything drinkable in laboratory glassware just to be cute. 
Apparently, this was a common problem where he worked because the people performing the chemical tests were usually not trained chemists. He would take a beaker of drinkable water right from the tap. To this, he would add a few milliliters of a very concentrated four molar solution of manganese sulfate. It's a very pink solution, but in the excess of water, the color virtually disappears. To this, he would add a very concentrated 12 and a half molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Of course, he would caution the new employee about the dangers of sodium hydroxide. And as soon as it was added, this nasty brown precipitate is formed. Mixing it up, he would ask them if they thought it looked good to drink. Invariably, no would be the reply. Then he brought out some concentrated sulfuric acid. Now even non-chemists usually know that's a pretty nasty thing and shouldn't be played with, let alone taken internally. He started adding the acid to this crazy concoction just a little tiny bit at a time. He started stirring it up and you could see that there was something happening. After adding a decent amount of the acid, all the precipitate had dissolved and they were left with this dark amber solution. It might look like iced tea, but knowing what's gone into this thing, it's not very appealing. Then he started adding sodium thiosulfate solution and the dark color of the solution started to fade. When it got to a certain pale straw color, he would add another colorless solution. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a dark blue color appeared. Then with continued stirring, he would add more and more sodium thiosulfate, slowly until the blue color finally disappeared. After all that, he asked once again, would you drink this? Nope. But look, it looks just like the pure water you started out with. The moral of the story was, just because it looks like water doesn't mean it is. The actual test, when titrating with a standardized sodium thiosulfate solution, allows you to calculate the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the water. Who knew it also doubled as a method to scare interns into practicing the most basic of lab safety protocols. If you're interested in the actual analytical test, just look up Winkler's Dissolved Oxygen Test or BOD, or Biological Oxygen Demand. There are two significant methods and this is a condensed version of one of them. The other one uses sodium azide as one of the reactants. It's less favored because of the hazards involved using sodium azide, but in spite of that, it's the most common procedure you'll find online. My dad used to work at a local zoo, and they used this test and others on the water for the marine mammal tanks. Dolphins, walruses, sea lions, that sort of thing. I've been doing a lot of filming lately. Now I have a backlog of editing to catch up on. More videos are on the way. Now that I have something resembling a workflow, I'm hoping to have regularly scheduled releases. If you like chemistry videos, you might want to think about subscribing. To the handful of people that already have, I can't thank you enough. And if you've come this far, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.